All right. So that's um, the end of the flexible reservations. Uh, there is a lot more detail, um, but I'm going to switch now and talk about uh, some of the other improvements in supply chain excellence uh, across uh, sales, procurement, and inventory areas. So the first thing we'll talk about is uh, a new capability to manually block a customer order. So a um, little background. Um, we've gotten this request many times um, from customers that come through our um, enhancement requests and, and uh, through product um, groups, advisory councils, and so on. And many customers have requested the ability to manually block a customer order from further processing. It could be for various reasons. It might not necessarily be due to credit. And so um, we've added a new capability to temporarily block a customer order so that goods won't accidentally be delivered to a customer before um, the reason for that block is sorted. And so the way it's implemented is we've provided um, the ability with an option to block orders. Um, and, of course, the order must be in certain statuses. That would be anywhere from planned through to partially delivered. So um, any, and really at any status up to delivery, um, we have the, the possibility to indicate a blocking reason. And then um, the release of those blocked orders is handled through um, the existing functionality that uh, has been in IFS for a while, which is called Handle Blocked Customer Orders. But um, the other important thing to note is that when an order is manually blocked, there are certain things that are allowed and not allowed. For example, when an order is blocked, it is allowed to connect that order to a shipment, to connect it to a load list, to, to change the order, maybe add lines to it, to be able to print things like pro forma invoice um, to print certain shipping documents. Um, you can move parts internally, for example, the shipment inventory. Um, you have the opt obviously the opportunity to receive advance payment and, and things like that. Um, what, is, what is not allowed with a blocked order is uh, a blocked order is that it can't be manually pegged to other orders. Uh, you can't print or send confirmations or, or print or send invoices. Um, or, or you can't uh, approve uh, stage billing. Um, so and this also uh, is affected in the multi-site environment. Um, so blocking an external customer will also block an internal customer order if you're sourcing it from another site. Um, and it's possible to configure um, if lines are considered as demand or not. So when you have a blocked order, should, for example, planning engines in ISS like MRP see that order as demand anymore and you can you can configure that. But of course block doors are always uh, still considered in cash flow analysis. Um, another new capability, uh, free of charge deliveries has been introduced. Uh, and, and what this is more about is the requirement uh, not so much to deliver uh, goods at free of charge, but how do we manage the taxes? So we needed a way to better manage the taxes, and uh, taxes might be um, might be required to be paid uh, either by the the company receiving the goods or the shipping company uh, that would be you as our customer. So in some in some countries uh, there is a threshold where if the value of the the uh, no charge products exceeds a certain amount, then tax would be applied. So we've added the ability to configure that. So um, some of the configuration is um, there's a new uh, free of charge uh, checkbox on the customer order. Um, and uh, you can decide if tax, taxes should be paid by the customer receiving the goods or the company shipping the goods. Um, and, then, um, and then you can set those threshold amounts uh, for those com countries that require that. So the way it's done uh, in the company setup, on the sales and procurement tab, there are some new fields, free of charge goods and services section. Um, and here uh, you can set the what the default is for the company. Um, you can set who should the tax paying party be. And if required, if there's a tax paying threshold amount, you can enter that there. And when creating a customer order line, 
if you check, check the free of charge checkbox, you see some new columns. We have a tax basis for free of charge in the, in the um, order currency. And we have the tax, the calculated tax amount in the, in the base currency. And so with some different scenarios, for example, here, when the tax paying party is the shipping company, that is yourselves, um, the net amount uh, for the order is zero, and the tax amount is zero. However, the company, the shipping company, is bearing the tax amount, and that is displayed in the on the order line. But the gross amount, so the, the customer receiving the goods is not going to see uh, any dollars. However, the $50 uh, is a liability that gets posted. Another new feature that's been added is to add valid two dates in sales pricing. And this adds a lot of flexi a lot more flexibility uh, in price lists and, um, and customer agreements. So previously, um, to phase out prices or, or even just do short-term type exceptions to price lists, there were workarounds and, and maybe could be perceived to be a little, little more cumbersome. But now it is possible to, um, to be able to combine lines with and without end dates uh, for a same part number. So there are validations. Um, valid to date um, is typically equal to be um, equal to or later than the valid from date. Um, so that's always enforced. Um, it's not, uh, there's no overlapping allowed uh, in the uh, valid from valid to time frame. And the valid to date um, should never be higher than the header to date. And so we see this um, useful in the, uh, especially in the, um, when we're sending uh, price catalogs out or via EDI or publishing price lists and so on. So um, there is new capability um, and new checkboxes on the adjust offsets. Uh, dialog box. We've introduced in Applications 9 the ability to undo a delivery. And, um, and that was typically for standard customer orders. However, um, there was strong requirements to support multi-site order deliveries with an undo capability and direct deliveries as well as deliveries of rentals, if, if you're using the new rental module. So we've added more comprehensive support for the reversal of a delivery. And it makes it a lot easier to do, to eliminate mistakes, you know, without having cumbersome workarounds, uh, especially in a multi-site order environment. So there has been, uh, in, the, in the solution that we've gotten, um, there, there are different scenarios that are um, that are provided for now, in addition to just a standard shipment. And that, and again, this is the ability to undo multi-site deliveries, um, direct deliveries from external suppliers. So when you had the the goods possibly drop ship from your supplier direct to your customer, um, we can manage that now. And again, uh, deliveries of rentals. So. There are um, several business events uh, now involved in, in undoing all of this, so there are additional transactions and, and, and all that that are invoked. Um, and there are rules, for example, you know, the internal customer order delivery can be canceled as long as the receipt of the internal purchase order isn't registered yet. So um, if, in, if the internal purchase order is already registered, then you have to back out of that. Uh, so you've got to reverse that, cancel that order, and then you can undo the delivery and so on. Um, and again, uh, some more you know some more complex scenarios, but canceling a direct delivery um, always has to be done from the customer order side, um, not not the purchasing side. So um, we undo the delivery. We don't have to undo the receipt. So. 
But if the whole process should be reversed, um, you have to take it in steps. First, you you un you cancel the external custom order delivery, and then you have to then do the internal. So, in the interest of this, um, for example, in a in a direct delivery from an external supplier, supplier there are additional business events that are introduced. Um, undo uh, direct ship custom order and undo shipment of non-inventory parts also. So again, just kind of summarizing that again um, in speaking about the rental uh, capability if you're using the new rental module. So we can undo or cancel the deliveries of rental orders. Um, and that can be done regardless of the rental event or the transactions or, or invoices already created. But there's a new rental event called undo delivery. We also introduced uh, along in the custom order area the uh, ability to copy a custom order. Um, previously it was uh, not quite as straightforward, but this new functionality actually uh, is, is a good improvement. Um, and some of the scenarios uh, where this would really be um, interesting is uh, many times we've seen where um, someone enters an order and uh, it was created for the wrong customer or maybe it was created on the wrong site or something like that. And it's frustrating to the user. They missed something and, and now they've got to redo their work. Well, this copy customer order helps that quite a lot. Um, it's available um, from um, from the navigator or, or right mouse button uh, off the order. Uh, you can choose copy order and it, it brings up a dialog. Um, and it creates a copy of the entire customer order with pretty much most of its data and, and gives you um, good flexibility to control what needs to be copied. So there are a number of checkboxes uh, that the user has uh, to decide if they want to or not and to copy certain elements of that order. Um, so you have the opportunity to, you know, change uh, who the customer is and, and uh, the order type, currency, delivery date, things like that. So again, this is just uh, drilling in uh, a little more um, visible on the screen here. So. Again, you can see when you right-click from the order header, you're presented with this dialog, and then you can enter the from order, which would be populated automatically, and then you could you can enter who's the new customer, if not if different, and order type, currency, one and delivery date, and then the various checkboxes that you have to decide whether or not you want to include certain elements of that order in the copy process. Um, we've done some improvements in the uh, delivery note analysis. Um, again, these were some business requirements that we got through various um, feedback from customers and so on and from the market. Um, so the requirement was really to have kind of an operations center where the user can plan, analyze, overview deliveries, and, and print, uh, print documents from there. Um, really to extend the information visible in the delivery note analysis page, as well as the shipment page with more delivery related information. So, so now um, what this really provides is the ability to really work from a single screen and not have to drill down and, and look up uh, information in other places and have to drill down to the underlying customer order or to look at an address or something like that. So it really gives the user who's planning uh, shipments uh, or that part of the process really a better tool. And um, so the um, some of the additions in the in the um, delivery note analysis um, is presentation of address information related to the transportation, um, reference to the external custom order label note, indication if dispatch advice has been sent or not. Um, and uh, in the uh, in the shipment, um, there's a new capability added um, in the on there's the presentation of forwarder 
um, address, um, label notes that are on shipment lines, and so on. And we have some other uh, miscellaneous improvements in the uh, order or the sales customer order module. Um, customer consignment with track parts. Um, as a consigner, it wasn't previously possible to keep track of which serial or lot trace parts a consignee used. Um, so um, really, uh, the, the reporting of customer consignment was done uh, almost anonymously. So now, um, consumption can be transparent and, and it's easier to keep track of the specific part details. And it makes it possible to use cost per serial or cost per lot in combination with customer consignment. Um, and uh, ownership transfer and warranty start um, are moved from delivery to the, at, to the consumption time. So the transactions are updated to reflect those updates. Um, there's a new capability been added uh, related to automatic substitution. In prior versions of ISS, if the original part wasn't available for stock, we had a manual substitution process to an alternate part. Um, and it could be a little bit cumbersome, especially in the trade or process industries, consumer goods industries. So we've done some work to automate that and makes it more flexible. And the way that's done, is really to set up some, some basic data um, to be able to automatically transfer the alternate part data from the master part to the sales part. And then you can even have a set of priority for alternates in the case if you've got more than one alternate, so you create those priorities. And then these, these uh, automatic substitution settings, are really, you can set them at a site level and you can set them for a specific customer. Um, these need to be enabled. They're not enabled by default. Um, so, and the substitution process is triggered when you when you do the availability check at the release of an order or priority reservation. So, if the original required part isn't available, the part will uh, the allowed substitute, substitute part will automatically be substituted with the one that has the highest priority. Um, a new capability of the entry of new lines on delivered orders. So currently, you'd have to enter a new order. For example, if, the, if you already shipped an order and the customer sends you a revision, adding a line to that PO, you would have had to create a new custom order. So now we have the possibility to add new lines on a delivered order. When you do that, the status rolls back to partially delivered, and you process as normal. So this really uh, improves uh, process and, again, is more aligned with what happens in reality uh, with many of our customers. Um, there's some uh, improvements in configuration of uh, agreement and the agreements. Um, the problem was that uh, with the customer agreement, delivery terms and ship vehicles are always fetched to the order header. And the result was the custom order lines, uh, not related to the agreement, still got delivery terms from the agreement. And that, that could increase, it, it could cause increased freight costs or could prevent the correct um, application of freight method or, or freight cost through charges due to incorrect delivery terms. So um, some improvements in the, in the logic there. And so the, you now have a checkbox on the, on the customer agreement whether or not um, it should be considered in the quotation order header when you're creating a sales quote or a custom order. The default, the box is checked by default, but you can uncheck it. Um, they've added, uh, for folks that are using the IFS Enterprise application search, a little bit of enhancement, uh, and we had a request to add the ability to search for customer name. Um, and uh, there, you know, and there's different scenarios. Um, but they've added um, document address fields to both the custom order and the sales quotation domains um, because uh, you couldn't find if you search on a specific address, you may not have found those records, but they've added those in now. Um, we've added a new capability to update um, an address on a quote line. So. 
um, it really is um, when you change the header delivery address, the user is prompted with a question that says, do you want to update all the lines as the same as the header address? And uh, the user can choose uh, yes or no on that. Um, another improvement, um, if you had a customer order where you provided goods, but you may have also provided a service or, or some type of no, you know, non-inventory type part, um, and uh, in a lot of in a lot of reasons, it's common business practice to include non-transportable items uh, to exclude them from the delivery note. Uh, they shouldn't be on the delivery note if they're not in the shipment. And so um, now you have this checkbox. Um, it's set at the company level again to exclude services on the delivery note. So that would be non-inventory sales parts of the category service would be excluded from delivery note printouts. Um, so a little bit of enhancement on custom order line. Um, in previous versions, um, the process of unreserving was a little bit cumbersome. You, you actually had to go forward before you co could go backward. That is, you would have to uh, report picking of zero or something like that. Uh, to get it back, and uh, so now uh, they've, sh they've shortened that process and given us the ability to just unreserve a complete reservation for one or more custom order lines, um, really more in, in just one click. Uh, 